Hey, what's up y'all? MKBHD here. Welcome back to another video. This one a little bit outside of the usual studio element, as you can immediately tell. Uh, that of course usually means I'm in a hotel room, and that's true again this time. I'm in California, um, and I'm out here because this week is the Ultimate Frisbee Beach World Championships. It's like a five day long tournament. It's super countries all over the world flying in here to compete, and I will be competing. I'm playing on Mixed Team USA. So pretty incredible actually. It's an opportunity of a lifetime and it's been one of my goals for basically my entire Ultimate Frisbee career to play on a Team USA and represent the country in a world championship. So pretty awesome that it's happening. So shout out to that team uh, and also for letting me <laughs> get over here to this hotel to also talk a little bit of tech because you know I couldn't resist. There's a random Apple event this week. It's the night before Halloween and they're talking new Macs, new M3 Macs and uh well, we got to talk about it. See, the thing is, in the tech world, a lot of times, you know, obviously these product announcement events are super exciting, but sometimes the story behind, like leading up to the event is just as exciting as the actual thing being announced. So in the, in the arc of technological progress, hopefully I'm doing this on the right side, usually there's a, a little bit of an arc, like a really, really fast, explosive beginning adoption phase, and then things sort of even out and become mature. And stable and every every piece of tech goes through this arc at different times you know with the smartphone world we're at like the flat part most of the time iPhone 15 is just a little bit better than iPhone 14 which was a little bit better than 13 but we did have to go through that explosive growth to get here and then there's other stuff like folding phones maybe that are just at the beginning or electric cars we see all kinds of first and second gen electric cars now so those are clearly at the beginning of that arc where all the early adopter and bleeding edge tech stuff is going on. And so I bring all this up because with our computers, it's actually not quite as straightforward as we think. They've actually kind of had an interesting curve. I think we all agree that computers, laptops, very mature. But what Apple did with Apple Silicon, when they announced Apple Silicon, their own integrated chips that they would be making and designing in-house to replace the Intel stuff that was in MacBook Pros and Macs before, they made this really big dent in the graph. They made a big leap that you don't usually see. So they are very, very stable with all these Intel machines for a while, and then this big jump up to Apple Silicon Max. And these things were a hit. I, I love mine. I'm, I'm in this hotel right now with my M1 Max MacBook Pro. And you would think this is one of those things that I usually like to stay on the bleeding edge and keep the latest and greatest stuff in my arsenal, but I haven't upgraded this in years because I haven't needed to. It's been amazing. A lot of creators that I know use these laptops. M2 came out after it was an improvement, but kind of back to being like a reasonable 30%, still a big jump, but like a 30 to 40% bump in CPU and GPU. So we had this stability for a while, a huge bump, and then sort of leveling back off. But then on top of all of that, there's actually been a couple other announcements that have been sort of intriguing of other silicon manufacturers actually catching up. This is all, I'm speculating a little bit because I haven't tried some of this stuff, but there was a recent Qualcomm announcement where they showed off some new chips they're working on that they are claiming has performance that's way beyond what M2 already offers. So all of that is the backdrop for this event that I'm about to watch, where we kind of wonder if Apple's gonna be able to give us some reasons to continue to buy new Macs. New Mac sales have not been growing as much as they've, as they've wanted and they really want to give us new reasons to. So I'm curious not just about the actual products that they're about to announce, but the story and the convincing that they have to do around the new products. I'm very confident that they'll be very technically impressive, three nanometer chips, etc. but I'm about to sit down and watch the event, but that's just the backdrop to what we're about to get. Let's see. Good evening and welcome to Apple Park. All right, so that event was Interesting. It, it was it was about what we expected, but again, sometimes the stuff around the event is more interesting than the event itself. So, uh, we got what we expected. It was a pretty short event. They got right to the chase. M3, M3 Pro, and M3 Max are the new chips. They're all 3 nanometer chips, too, which is awesome. And then we got the machines that they're in. So, there is a new MacBook Pro, 14-inch and 16-inch, which have these new chips, and they refresh the new iMac. Now, there are some new abilities with these chips, right? There are some subtle things that you may or may not take advantage of, like improved mesh shading or 
Now there's hardware accelerated ray tracing for applications that take advantage of that. Maybe you're generating 3 new models or you're doing After Effects work or working in Maya or something like that. But something sneaky that they did was in the general broad performance stuff that they talked about. They of course showed their usual graphs, but they almost always verbally compared the M3 family to the M1 family of chips, not M2. And you know, that obviously makes sense. They're trying to make the improvements look as large as possible. M2 chip is only two years old. So the fact that they're 50% better in some stuff, 60% better than M1 is amazing. But if you look at compared to M2, most of the numbers were more in the 10 to 15 to 20, 25% range better than M2 as far as raw performance. But again, it's gonna depend on your workflow. I'm just thinking, all right, this is about what we expected. I'm gonna have to test the machines to figure out what battery life is like and what general performance in the stuff I do is like. I do video editing. They showed other workflows like DNA sequencing and like building applications and coding and all, all kinds of stuff I don't do but generally modest update. Now this whole time I'm watching this event, I'm thinking, okay, I probably don't need to upgrade, right? I mean, I have this M1 Max MacBook Pro. It's been great. So what machines are they gonna put this new M3 family of chips in? So they introduced them to us and there are some new MacBook Pros and a new iMac. The iMac is easy and probably actually where that M1 comparison makes the most sense. It's the same thin, colorful iMac, just with the new M3, same price, Beautiful, easy, simple upgrade. But MacBook Pros, uh, a little bit different. They first of all got rid of the 13 inch MacBook Pro with touch bar. Totally fine with me. Good riddance, honestly. It's now just the 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros. The 14 inch, you can get the base M3 or M3 Pro or M3 Max. And then the 16 inch, you can get M3 Pro or M3 Max. And they also introduced a new color uh, called Space Black a matte anodized aluminum black MacBook Pro. And uh, well, I might, I might want to upgrade. I don't, I don't need it though. I don't need it, but I kind of, I might want to upgrade. I don't need it. I don't need it. I definitely don't need it. You know, clearly Apple's very clever about this stuff. They know that if they just do the new chip, then maybe not as many people will upgrade. But if you want to know that you have the new one, it's the most classic Apple thing is they give it a new look and then you know you have the new one just by looking at it. And so this, this black one, it speaks to me. They talked about it in the event as having a special anodized coating to prevent getting lots of fingerprints. I'm very curious about seeing that in person. We have some footage here, ideally, that I'm, I'm showing you right now of actual in-person looks at that new matte black MacBook Pro. I'm calling it matte black. It's supposed to be space, space black or whatever, but I'm calling it matte black. And you know, I have a black dbrand skin on my MacBook Pro right now. It does pick up a little bit of fingerprints and you can see that. So I'm very interested if that will actually hide fingerprints. We'll see. And the other thing that I was actually curious about is uh, they're gonna ship a new iMac, but they just sent the iPhone to USB type C. So are they also going to switch all these silly accessories like the trackpad and the keyboard to finally be USB type C so we can slowly start getting rid of lightning everywhere? But they didn't. <laughs> it's still lightning trackpad, lightning keyboard. So that upgrade we'll have to see another day. So those are just some nuggets for you. But I think generally the thought here is what Apple's trying to do is make this upgrade seem as large as possible even though really people who have M1 and M2 likely won't have to upgrade. If you have an M1 Max, how big of an upgrade is M3 Max really gonna be? It will depend on if you're pushing your current M1 Max to its limit. And most people aren't. You know who you are if you are pushing it to its limit. I'll put it that way. Um, I am currently, you know, I'm gonna edit this video, this 4K video from the Canon R5. I'm gonna chop it up on Final Cut Pro on the laptops, and it's gonna break a sweat a little bit, I already know, but it's gonna export in a, a handful, maybe 25 minutes, and then it's down to my internet connection. That's usually my biggest obstacle, so I don't actually need to upgrade. But the really impressive part is for the people who are actually maxing out these machines, lighting up all the cores, you know, they have a new maximum of 128 gigs of unified memory on the M3 Max. So people who are really pushing these machines to their limits are gonna have even more amazing machines to go out and do their 3D rendering, their DNA sequencing, all the stuff that they're doing and pack that machine up 
and take it on the go, which is ultimately what this is about. Also, this was so random, but at the very end, at the very end, did you catch at the end of the keynote that little message with text? The keynote ends, they fade to black, and on a black background with white text, they say, this event was shot on an iPhone. And wow, I did not see that coming. I watched the event fully believing that this, this was probably shot on regular cameras because there's also like drone shots and CGI and all sorts of added effects and it's colored beautifully and I don't know where the microphones are. Again, I have so many questions. I want, I've wanted to see behind the scenes of an Apple Keynote so badly for years, but more than any other one, I've wanted, I want to see the behind the scenes of this one. So that, I just, I'm just putting that out into the universe. Amazing amazing production. I'll say stay tuned for a, a review of these machines. If you want to see real footage of the matte black MacBook Pro and all this new stuff, get subscribed below. I do plan on getting my hands on that stuff and reviewing it when it comes out, but this just been my uh, first look and impressions. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one. Go USA. Peace.